Hey guys, we're gonna just ask you guys to all stand up real quick. Sorry to get you out of your comfy seat. A lot of slouching. Um, and let's give the first standing ovation to Elevar. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's extreme. Test, test, test. Does that work? Hello? Test, I don't test. think is it yeah. good. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, extremely cool to be here. First time in South South Carolina. Should really awesome them? place. Yeah. Should we have them stand the whole time. No, no, they <laughs> should probably sit down. Jumping jacks. All right. <laughs> Jumping jacks. So you guys can all sit down. Thank you guys. I, we just get your energy out. And you know, when uh, Brad came up to us and said, "Hey, you guys are speaking," and we wanted to put something together for it, which was four days ago. So like, we've got a really cool presentation here together. Uh, we put something together. We put our minds together this weekend. We're going to go through a lot of fun stuff. So let's go ahead and kick it off real quick. And we'll start with introductions. For those that don't know either of us, we want to do a quick introduction, give you guys caught, caught up to speed and let you know why we're here and what we're here to do and talk to you guys about here today. So first things first, this is me. I'm Jimmy. My name is Jimmy Kim. I'm from San Diego, California. I'll be in Austin, Texas here soon. Uh, and uh, I made the tr trip out here. Very excited to be here. First things first, I'm a digital marketer. I always think of myself as a digital marketer all the way back to 2009 when I started really learning what this whole online thing was. And I really got myself specialized in email marketing, retention marketing. In fact, I owned a brand as well, too. I used to own a men's clothing brand. The story is one of those fun ones where a buddy of mine called me up and said, hey, I need 50 grand for a Pacific Sunwear invoice. And I said, sure, here's some money, because he was a buddy of mine. And then a couple months later, I walked, walked in there and I said, all right, well, we got to talk about this money thing. Like, I got to get back now. And I said, hey, man, tell me about your brand. And he goes, you know, this is 2013. I was like, oh, this is cool. And then he, I said, so what are you doing online? And he looked at me and said, online? And I was like, let's be partners. And so we scaled that thing over the next four years. Uh, we're one of the first shop by Plus stores in the, uh, when we were doing it. And uh, we scaled that thing to close to a little bit over $10 million. So that's me. And then today, right now, I am the founder and CEO of a unified email, SMS, and reviews platform for e-commerce merchants just like yourself. Hey guys, uh, my name's Ron Shaw. I, um, I was actually, my dad had uh, told me my whole life I had to be an accountant. So um, I uh, started off being an accountant. I worked at Deloitte, got the opportunity to work at a uh, supplement startup as a controller. Um, and from there, my whole life changed. Um, I went into the world of startups, supplements, et cetera, and uh, got to meet Ash there. And uh, we went and started our own marketing agency, Worked with some incredible clients, one being Hooked on Phonics, uh, where we worked on bringing the product that is fully analog into a digital world. Um, I also got to work on a brand called Aloha, which was a, uh, a vegan protein supplement company, which has done pretty well so far. Um, and from there, I uh, always wanted to have my own brand, and uh, having the right partners was really, really key for us. So Ashwin Ankit and I, we actually went and started Obby back in 2019. Um, where we are today, we're still operating Obby. We just recently bought a company called Coffee Over Cardio, um, and we're starting a pet line called Paw Rangers. Um, on our free time, we run a podcast called Chew On This, so check that out. Uh, but that's a little bit about me, and I'm from Jersey, so nothing to call home about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so what are we here to talk about here today? What's their agenda here? We've kind of narrowed it down to a couple points that we want to make sure we're discussing. First, we're going to start off with Ron. He's going to talk about the current state of DTC. I'll support him, talk about things that we're seeing on our side on the data side, where you know Ron sees on a different size as he's talking to merchants. We'll talk about funnel optimization and going beyond the flows, right? Thinking about what we can do today. Ron will show, share some of his flow segments and things that he's doing today. And then I'll talk about how you can take those flows and take them to the next step and start optimizing and leveraging the power that's in front of you that you may not be doing today. Uh, then we're going to get a little more strategic with segmentation, and Ron's going to expose his Obby playbook and talk about the different types of strategic emails and the different things of strategic segmentation he does in order to make sure that, well, you guys can kind of start thinking about it and start elevating based on data and optimization. Uh, then we're going to talk about the future of email. I think this has been a really big topic as we're seeing a lot of new evolutions and change happen. We talk about two very specific things that are changing, and I think we can start wrapping up around it. And a lot of this is going to be a little bit of a back and forth kind of thing. I think I'll add to his, you'll add to mine, and we'll kind of talk through it. And then, of course, we got a little QA, we got a little gift, so keep you guys included and uh, excited about the things we're talking about. So let's go ahead and kick it off, Ron. So let's talk about the hardest time to build a D2C brand. Yeah, I think, I think it's important to set the stage, right, uh, quite literally speaking, in the sense of like when we are looking at whether you're an agency 
or your brand founder or, or on the SaaS side, whatever it is, if you look at the time we're in right now, which is post pandemic, post iOS 14, pre inflation, probably one of the largest economic downturns, right? If you're struggling, I think um, there is tons of other people in the room that are in the same exact boat. Um, and so I think, I think one piece is, is it is one of the hardest times to build a D2C brand, a, a SaaS business for D2C, an agency for D2C. And so if you are above water or close to there, I think you're already winning um, and, and be proud of that. But if you're not, then just know there's a lot of us and that includes brands that like us as well. Yeah, no, we see it on the data side. I think as we serve a lot of our merchants, we were served like a middle market enterprise merchant often in our uh, book of business. And, you know, we see everybody. It's not that they're just down in trends. It's almost like you can see the same trend line, but like 10 to 20 percent lower. I mean, that's really what we're seeing. And it's a lot to do with just the headwinds and it's kind of getting normalized and caught up. But I think it's interesting just to know that, hey, if you are having some challenges and struggles right now, you're not alone. It's what we're seeing in the market, but it's just normalizing. And as, as entrepreneurs, marketers and you know, operators, you have to always continue to adapt and work through there. So I think uh, it's good to know and let you guys know that that is what's happening in the market and it's just good to kind of set that pace. So, you know, with that, we think about funnels, right? One of the things that we're up here to talk about is optimization and thinking about all the different things you can do in an automated nature, letting the machine take over, make those decisions and put the right things together. And look, everybody here does the basic ones. And if you're not doing the basic ones, you probably need to start here. But you know, things like a welcome email, an abandoned card, a post-purchase, those are obviously things that we've all learned. It's the same 20-year-old playbook that we've been using, and it's something that we're doing. But then we start looking at something like Ron does, and the next slide will be a big thing about how he prioritizes his uh, automations and flows. Yeah, so um, we'll go deep into this uh, in a second. Um, but uh, this is actually uh, something that Ash got to put together when uh, we actually started to realize our biggest struggle was retention. Um, Ash was able to acquire um, tens of thousands of dollars of revenue every day on an acquisition sense, but ba basically at break even. But he's like, hey, if we need to become profitable, our retention just needs to be there, right? So we kind of took retention and said, well, right now everyone just kind of buckets it and says, hey, well, I sent out an email or, you know, I sent out a, a blast. Um, and, and, and I think where we went deeper were, was, was, was starting to segment people very differently. Um, we have um, probably call it 10 or 12 different SKUs. And I think what we were doing before was we treated everyone like they bought everything, right? So it's like, hey, welcome to Obvi. And, you know, I hope you love this, this suite of products. But most of the people were actually just buying 80%. 80% of our people were buying just one SKU. Uh, another 20% was a good product mix across the other eight to 10 products. And we never segmented before. We never treated the person who bought our best seller completely different from the people who were buying all of our other products. So whether you look at um, our abandoned cart, um, that's actually split out based on what you're buying um, versus what other people are buying. Even if you look at our welcome series, we have a welcome series for our best seller product, best selling product, and then a welcome series that's different for another segment, so on and so forth, even post-purchase. Um, and, and the whole thing is, is people want to be talked to with some sort of personalization in mind. Um, I think we've all gotten into a pretty lazy habit with email, at least, at least speaking from our end. Um, we were pretty lazy for at least the last 18 months, which was, let's just send out this email, should work, and then you have the same cohort of people that keep buying, and you keep thinking that it's going to keep working like that. But until we segmented like this, we didn't get to really understand, well, who's actually coming back? and what type of messaging is actually working for them. So again, feel free to take a screenshot or, or a photo, but the point here is, is actually sending out different segments based on what people bought within your company. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a completely um, tedious process, but it's extremely worth it. You know, Ron, when you're going through some of these thought processes and optimization, I think one thing you and I talked about that was really interesting is like a lot of the things we build often with the flows and things, when you start the business, you build this little foundation and you start doing it. But, you know, Ron, like obviously one of the things that you start, you came when you came over Sendlane was one of the things you said, like, hey, it's time that we understand our customers now. It's now time to rebuild the experience based around what we're doing in our business today versus what I was doing the business four years ago. And I think that was a really a loud resonating thing yeah. because 
you understand more, but often flows aren't touched as much as they should be. No, not at all. Uh, just one point on that too. It's like we made the move. Obviously, I mean, you look at a move from like a Clavier to Sendlane. Um, there is, there is obviously you can save money, great support, etc. I think the biggest piece, though, like Jimmy mentioned, we got to just completely reset. And there were stuff that we found in our flows that were like not touched, broken links yeah. for two, three years, et cetera. So for us to be able to reset was, was a huge piece of the migration they handled. Yeah. So, you know, and one of the things that we worked with the Avi team and we're working through it is like taking that next step, right? We all get the flows. You see these, some other ideas and these are all great ideas. But, you know, one of the things that come with email and SMS, I think would really important is there's actually a really powerful intent signals that we're not leveraging in most brands today. And I think that's what it comes down to. And it's the click, right? We all know what the click is, right? They're telling you what they're interested in right? They're telling you what they want to know. But oftentimes, as Ron just mentioned in his playbook over the last 18 months, you weren't listening. They were clicking and you weren't listening. What would you do? You send a click and then they click and then you'd send them another campaign. And this is where you start thinking about that optimization, where you're going to take your retention and start expanding on it. So let's go into it. Let's dig a little bit late, uh, deeper right here. Take a look at this one example here, right? You tag on the left side is a typical email that you might send out into the market. And it's got, hey, you know, I'm having a sale, men's, kids, women's, whatever it might be. They're clicking and showing you intent behind what that is. Now, in this example, if you start thinking about what you could do, it's very simple. You take that person, they make a click, and then three hours later, you're following them up with an SMS. That's a natural flow and natural behavior, right? I know we send them browse abandons, abandoned cards, whatever that message is, but making sure you can do that. Or you can even think about the other way with SMS, right? You know, what's interesting about SMS is that SMS is not a batch and blast channel. We've already learned this lesson already over the years with email. Where SMS comes into place more, it's, an, it's a now an action channel. It's one that creates something to happen now, and most purchases happen within the first two hours after you send it. There's a reason for that, because people are walking down the street, they're clicking on their SMS, they're looking at it. But now what happens when they click on it, which they usually have really high click rates, but not a lot of purchases are happening. Well, oftentimes, you can start thinking about it a little bit differently and start tagging those users and sending them a follow-up message through email using the two channels together, right, without spending the expensive cost of SMS while still delivering that effective message into the system. And so, you know, this is a perfect example. I'm clicking, I click, three hours later, I get followed up because I didn't make a purchase, right? So this is where you start thinking about optimization when you're thinking about it. And one's targeted, one's not typical, right? One's like, hey, I'm just broadly messaging you, I'm just mass batching you. And at the consumer level, you generally feel the difference, right? In fact, I even brought out a bigger one if you want to think about flow optimization and how you could take somebody and take them down a journey. Well, you can think about it even in a bigger way. And this one, this is a pure example. Every business will be different. But just to give you an idea, a user clicks, and then I add a tag about what they might be interested in. In this case, men's shoes. I put a marker on the uh, customer to say, hey, they're already in an automation funnel. Let's go ahead and exclude them from different things. And I'll start following them up with messaging. So I'll send them men's shoes. I'll wait another day. I'll follow them up with more. And I'll just continue following them up in a very targeted manner. And I'm not going to go through all of these because the clock keeps running down. And I, I feel like I'm getting pressured here. But we're going we're gonna to continue thinking about this. And you start thinking about this. So when you see this flow, and when you see what you're seeing here is you're taking a customer who's shown you an action and behavior, an intent, an interest in what you're doing, and you're funneling down a very specific flow, right? That's what you're doing. And obviously, why does it work? Very simple. One, it's focus, one category. Two, time. Buying cycles are a thing. Payday is a thing. These are things that people need to be thinking about. And last, the nurture, right? When a brand tells you about the same thing over and over again, a hundred different ways on the specific product you're going to be interested, you're going to get sold to. That's your job in retention is to sell the person and keep them interested in the thing that you're selling ultimately. So, you know, when I, when I break this out, I look at it very simple. We all understand acquisition, targeting, prospecting, retargeting. In my opinion, when it looks at retention and you look at the way that you think about it, segmentation is your awareness play. You've got your campaigns that build awareness, right? The consideration starts really in your automation funnels. And then, of course, what I call automated life cycles, which is where you're targeting the click and following them up, aka retargeting, to go ahead and close the sale, right? That's what you think about. So now let's, let's dive right into this, right? Now that you've kind of set your mind thinking about it a little bit different, let's go into strategy a little bit. You know, obviously, Ron, you've got some great uh, slides here around things that you will be talking about around the strategic side of things that you do, Avi, around segmentation and being able to go through messaging. So let's go through them. Yeah, uh, I'll jump into some really like tactical examples. Um, again, may not be applicable to everyone, but I'm um, just kind of trying to train you guys to think a little bit differently. Um, I can't see that, so let me go here. 
Um, all righty, cool. So when, when it comes to a, um, a, a email where we just send it to, um, whether it's our abandoned cart or, or our um, welcome series, what we like to do is actually take a survey why someone bought. So this is a post-purchase follow-up. Um, and we'll understand from that survey, oh, someone bought because they've lost a lot of hair during COVID, okay? This is one of the reasons you take collagen is a hair benefit. Um, and then we'll actually dynamically add something custom like that into that first email they get. So they, what well, 90% of the email is a template, but that 10% um, segment, uh, the 10% the, the of the segment of that email is fully personalized, tying it back to why they actually bought. And it's again, a personal thank you slash welcome email. Um, so that, that was, a, that's an example there. Um, on the abandoned cart, right? We've been talking a lot about the click, the click, the click. Abandoned cart, the most important piece is the click, right? I think a lot of us have become, again, very template driven of, yeah, show them what's in the cart and then just let them go back to the, uh, the website and hopefully they convert. Um, we do kind of test, we do test a few different things. One of the cool things we do is um, we'll add like a mystery element where we'll tell people like, hey, we added a mystery gift. And what we'll take is whatever we have a high stock of, we'll just add it in uh, on, a, on a low COGS level and we'll add it into their abandoned cart. So first of all, people who are clicking to find out what that mystery gift is, you, know, you understand their intent. They just want a little bit more. Even our discount code that we give, right? Um, we'll say something like, hey, use mystery code X, XYZ and you can reveal it at checkout. Again, this is your highest intent customers. Think of different ways to go beyond the click. Um, one thing we do with Black Friday, which I know is probably on, on a lot of people's mind, um, is everything for us is access based. You can't get access to anything on our website unless you give us something. It's a very give and take relationship we have with our customers. So whether we ask them to opt into Messenger, which uh, I know a lot of people are like, who uses Messenger? Uh, for our demographic, a lot of people use Messenger. Um, and uh, you have, we, Sometimes ask for SMS opt-in, join our community, go follow our, our, our TikTok, like the most recent video, download our app from Tapcart. Like we'll literally ask them to do even the smallest favor to get access to something. Nothing is free, nothing is just come and visit our sale and get something, we make them earn it. And I think that's one layer you can create at, with a good mix of FOMO. And I like how you're building a habit, essentially. You're building a, a give-take habit. They yes. understand that they need to do something in order to receive, and getting that action ultimately leads to one thing that matters most, which is a click. That's and right. you're getting to track their idea, ID and who they are and be able to utilize that for things like Elevar and different things where you know, you're being able to start tracking some of those things that come down the line. Um, yeah, so even, even here, um, what we do is a lot of surprise and delight. Um, and we'll just be like, hey, you're one of 20 customers that just got access to this, right? Um, you figure out your numbers, you guys figure out whatever works for you. But for us, um, our customers like to feel special and we do it in batches so that it doesn't get played out either. Um, and then they'll take something like this, go into the community and be like, I was selected. Now the people who weren't are like, well, how do I, right? And it creates this constant funnel. And if you don't have a community, you can still utilize the other platforms you do to communicate with your customers to showcase what you're doing to create a little bit of FOMO. Um, and then the click to reveal piece. I think that's one of our favorite things to do. Uh, I gave an example earlier, but even our subject lines, if you, if you look at our subject line here, it's just seven hours and four minutes, dot, dot, dot. It's extremely obscure, right? Um, it does kind of get our open rate to go um, higher, but you know, that's not always right, right? If, it's, if the intent isn't there, you don't want the open rate to be um, just high for no reason. But because we make the open, uh, the open rate pretty high and now you have to click to reveal, you're adding layers of intent there. Um, so again, just adding some good examples of getting people to go beyond just the click um, and, and what they expect. Yeah, and it's cool. We worked with your v, uh, VP of marketing on this and doing this with them. And I was like, what? Why would you do that? Yeah. But I looked at the data and the click-through rates, what, triple, triple probably yeah. what yeah. you see normally. Yeah. And it's really just that FOMO piece. It's like, well, I don't know what's on the other side, so I've got to click, right? You've got the most yeah. engaged people who are really actually interested making that move. And I think that's really shown in some of these things. And, and one other layer, like what um, 
Jimmy kind of touched on with segmenting and tagging and stuff. With Sendlane, you're able to really understand all the steps someone is taking with, uh, within, uh, within the platform itself. So we're able to see, oh, well, this person came here, opened this, clicked here. Now do we just need to sweeten the offer? Or now do we just need to make where we send them be a little bit more optimized, et cetera? So we're able to go uh, down the funnel a little bit better. Yep, absolutely. Um, these are just more examples of just strategic emails. Like the one in the middle is a good example of something that works really well for us where we break down um, the costs to be so digestible um, that people are like, huh, I didn't think about it that way. This isn't anything you know, new out of the playbook, but it's just another way to think about how your um, price positioning, especially in today's market. Yeah, I think they call it reduced to the minimum, I think. They yeah, this. yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's a cool strategy. Cool. Well, let's uh, dive into kind of the future as we think about some of the future. And I think it's interesting, Ron, like, you know, you see, you see everyone talking about AI. Actually, the hype's kind of died off a little bit. I, I feel so. like the noise was big and then whatever. And I think, I think what the future of AI really is enablement, right? I always say that it's going to 10x the marketer. It's going to make us 10x faster, better, more accurate things that come into place. And we, as we look into the future of email, I have two different things that I think about. But I'll kind of start with mine. And then uh, Ron has a couple ideas for me, right? So I talk about things like this, right? So this is something that you can do today in Gmail. If you don't know what it is, it's called annotations in promotional Gmail. And what this is, is you've ever seen that before where you see like pictures of shoes or whatever, and you can shop right there. It might have stars. It might have a purchase thing. That's called annotations that you can do inside of Gmail. Here's the problem. It's really hard if you don't know what you're doing. And it's not something you can just go plug in. However, as I look into the future of things and the way that companies are thinking about this, this is where things get really exciting, right? Where you can automatically, based around their segment and based around their data and information that you might have, be able to take that information and bring it over into an annotation so that when the customer is browsing, not only are they seeing your, for example, your shoes right in their face standing out in a different way, but the second thing is you can actually show that displayed based on their behaviors and their data and their intent. And that's what makes it really intent. In fact, you can even put a little coupon there to stand out and say, this, this email has got a $10 coupon attached to it, right? These are really cool awesome. things. You can do it today. Everybody on whatever platform mostly can do some version of this. Unfortunately, it's really not an easy thing to do, which is the challenge that comes in. And this is where I see the future of AI starting to change for uh, email. Now, Ron's got a different thought process. I'll let you kick it off there. Yeah, um, I, I, think, I think on our end, we, we're pretty bullish on interactive emails becoming um, something that kind of takes leap. Um, and, and I think this is a good example um, where um, the actual email itself is built to take in user data right on the email itself. So this is an email where when you click the poll or answer or pick one of the options, it actually collects the data right there. It doesn't make someone go and fill out a survey somewhere else. Um, the, uh, the, the technology that's being used here is Litmus. Um, but what's really cool here is I think we're all, as on, a, on a founder level or if you're an agency, again, you're trying to figure out and solve for what the customer wants. And, and it's, it's whether it's price, product, who, what, why, when, how, all those questions, right? Um, I think email is going to start becoming a tool where you actually collect data that goes deeper than just just their email or, or their preferences on what they bought, bought, I think we're going to be able to figure out a lot more. What do they want next? What do they want right now, right? Um, and uh, I think uh, interactive content is going to be pretty big. Yeah, you know what's funny is interactive content, it's called AMP, right? I'm sure some of you guys may have heard this word AMP, AMP. Uh, it's actually part of something that Google created and is spread over to Yahoo now. What's interesting with AMP and why I, I like where Ron's thinking about, but remember this only actually works for 20, 30, 40% of your audience if they're on the right device and the right, right product. It does not work for everybody. So that does not mean that this replaces what you do. This is almost an addition. And I think what's important when you understand something like this is that if you don't have your basic optimization done, don't go into advancing into this because this is more work to what you're doing today, not a replacement of work. And I think that's a really different thought process. Yeah, 100%. Um, another great example is Feastables. Uh, what they do is uh, they'll have somebody, they'll, they'll, they'll send an email where all you need to do is just click as many times as you can to possibly win a coupon, right? Um, uh, they, they only give the coupon to like five people. But the, the point is, is they're, they're, they're training the customer. Again, their demo is much younger, so it makes a little bit more sense. But I think sometimes they're shocking your customer too. 
um, gives you the ability to understand intent, uh, understand are they there, right? And and right now, I think again, we 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 look at just the stale um, open versus click um, ratios. I think we need to understand interaction um, to go deeper. And then you get like two million clicks on this thing, yeah, right? Yeah, Something like that is clicks. crazy. And yeah. Feastable is much a Gen Z brand, and often people are like Gen Z doesn't care about email. Yeah, they got two million clicks to prove that it doesn't. So like they're still paying attention and it's all about driving that community and bringing those people to the right place. I'm sure, you know, obviously Feastable's Mr. Beast. I'm sure he made a post on YouTube and said, check your email. It's probably this first time half of them checked the email, but <laughs> they did engage with that. And I think yeah. that's important to know that that's actually occurring as well. All right. Um, yeah, we can speed through this. Uh, again, these are just more examples of uh, really interactive emails. They're people who make you do a word search or a crossword. Um, to go and basically solve for what the discount code should be or could be. Um, again, if someone's using that, figures out that discount code, right, you should be able to bucket that group as like a highly interactive group of customers, right? So it's not just the people who buy, but even the people who go and do the work to get uh, access, right? Um, I think it, you, you can start segmenting those people a lot differently. So just some more examples up here. Yeah, it's just kind of pointing out your most loyal customers, the ones that are highest intent that are going to always interact with you. And I think it's pretty cool when you start layering on a layer of interactive. So as we look at this, this is kind of the future. And uh, as we wrap up here, I've got two things. I've got one, a free gift. This may not go to you. It might be for someone like your marketer, a friend, an agency, whatever it might be to help them out. I've got a 12-hour course that I'm giving away just as a thing. Thank you for letting us uh, share our knowledge here on here so you can take that QR code and uh, the code is LOVAR, so you get that for 100% off. You go to e-commerce academy, pick bundle four, send it to your favorite marketer. If you've got a retention marketer, you can send it to them. Uh, we use this as an internal playbook to teach people how to go from zero to 100 in what we do in email and SMS marketing and reviews now. Uh, so please go there. It's 12 hours of me, so hopefully they like me and what I have to say. But it's very much a simple basics to what is an open rate all the way to strategic around how to take your most valuable customers, segmentation, strategic playbooks around event marketing, the things that I've done over the history of the last 15 years on email and really seen evolve as well. Um, yeah, and then on our end, uh, we have a podcast like we mentioned. Uh, we drop an episode every two weeks. We're also branching out and creating new series, one being Chew on CRO pretty soon, and then Chew on Finance as well. Um, so we're super excited. We put out a ton of content. Follow us on Twitter um, and uh, check out our podcast and newsletter. Cool. And I think that's it. Yeah, and then uh, you guys have our um, contacts. So. Yeah. so there's our contact information. Yeah. And, uh, as long as you're not a stalker, you can text us. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Awesome job. Cool. All right. Thanks, guys. That's it. Thank you, everyone. This is not the end, just the end of the sessions. There is downstairs, happy hour. Damn. Go Good. mingle, Delicious. drink, whatever. And then we got the boat cruise. Buses leave at 4.30. And then when it leaves, it'll come back and pick everyone else up at 4.50. That's it. Thank you, everyone, for coming. And while everyone's leaving, just real quick, again, all the sponsors will be down there. We got free CRO audits. We have Adrian's giving away a bunch of free gifts. So go downstairs. Driving.